My section for that little mohawk is gonna come back just to the back crown, get that round because of how the, uh, the sectioning is going to work. I do like to follow the shape of the head, keeping a pretty consistent rectangle here because it just makes for cleaner working. Is that looking all right? Am I in the way? You work with nice clean parting, it's gonna make your life so much easier down the road because we are gonna be starting at the top and then working down. So if you work neat, you're not gonna be pushing a whole bunch of messy, messy stuff out of the way. So silky. Towards the, you know, right about the corner of my rectangle from the top, I'm gonna take that to directly behind the ear, creating a nice panel to work with. It's the side of her head. Take that out of my way. And then to finish that off, I'm just gonna divide this last back section just right in half. And this sets you up really for many different color and lightning techniques because this really does section out three pretty important areas that you have to work with because the hair along the part typically is going to want to be a little bit lighter. It's going to be a little bit easier to get lighter and you're going to need to be putting a lot of focus on that. Your hair through the sides of the head, you might want to treat a different way just because whatever look you're going for. So we've got our sectioned off up top again where we're going to be doing the tease highlighting. Sides will be weaves and the back will be slices. I like to work, I'm going to be standing in front of her. So which one do you want me to stand in? So I destroy these. <laughs> so real quick, right up front on this front hairline, on a regular hairline, it's going to give a little bit more, but you guys get the idea. I like to do weaves along the hairline because it gives it a nice bold pop without so much of a, a harsh, harsh line. So I'll just, you know, grab some random, going a little heavy on it because chances are if they're already your color client, there's already some lightness through here. That's why this is sort of refreshing at the same time as creating. Just come on in. Get it nice and tight if that's the look you're going for. The, the only, not the only, but the, the one part of the head that I really try to focus on a real client of making sure I get as close as I can is this money piece because that's what makes it pop so much. That's what makes that explosion around the face that everyone notices because it's great. You want it to look good all over because you know, you're providing a service and this is your work, but it's that stuff around the face that they're gonna stare at, that they're gonna notice right off the bat. Okay, so we've got our little money piece working. We're good. Now for the rest of this mohawk, I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna take slightly thicker sections and we're gonna do tease highlights. So the whole point of a teased highlight is to get energy of a foil with the softness of balayage or an ombre so much. It's not, you're not gonna get close to the root, so it's obviously not something that maybe you wanna do on everybody. For what we're doing here, it's pretty perfect. So I'm gonna do a little bit fatter of a weave, you can see. Decently thick, and then just some light teasing. I'm holding on, not real tight, because more so than creating a nest at the root, I'm trying to see that I'm breaking up where the ends of the hair are, because I don't have it super, super tight with the tease, so there's ends all over here. I'm gonna highlight to about there, and what that's gonna do, that's going to avoid a line altogether. Think about where that's hitting on all that different hair, and then just to add a little bit more softness, I'll turn my brush, just have more of like a feathered technique up at the top there. Make sure you get a good saturation. I lock it up. And then Christos is saying, or Christos, Christos is saying how much uh, space do you have between your sections? Here I'm doing, I don't know, maybe half inch in between. It's really going to be dictated by how much you want this curtain up top to have lightness going throughout. I'm gonna get that out of my way. So in moving into these side panels, this hair is gonna come, for this type of haircut, it's gonna come down, it's gonna go back. It needs to look good in many different directions. I am gonna follow the hairline and I'm gonna do a really Really light weave first because a lot of people even on a look like this that does look a little more lived in do still want it to to show when they pull their hair back I do like to do just a little guy a little itsy bitsy along the hairline I'll just grab like small little baby lights oh, baby. he's cute and then I'll just leave that as an actual weave I won't tease it or anything do you want me to do both sides or just go into the back after this so we get that little cute little weave in there. But then once I move into 
Once we go beyond the hairline and we get into the meat of the side section, I do like giving it a little bit more of a pop. Because we're doing a weave, it's not going to explode like a slice would, but I do want to start seeing some bands running through the hair because we are trying to marry this new look with if she's got old blonde on, uh, on her ends. I like to follow my section angle, that with the hairline, because that makes it fine if the hair comes forward, fine if the hair goes back, and it gives it enough of a diagonal to diffuse it as it comes down. Again, just a nice little weave. I like to change up some thicker, some little. You can do Morse code in their hair if you want, with dots and dashes, whatever. Whatever makes you happy, and also makes them happy, because let's not forget, kind of what they're paying for. I'm a big fan of Olaplex. Ever since it came out, I've seen really amazing things. I've been able to do really amazing things. I'd say not stress as much, but let's be honest, like <laughs> we're all just stressing all the time. But it's nice that my stress is for nothing when I use Olaplex and the hair feels great afterwards. It has a nice shine. So back here, typically the hair is more dense, it is darker, it doesn't see the light as much. You can, you can go, you can get in there a little bit. Back here is where I like to do full on slices because this is what's going to fall around, like around the face, but like around the neck. That, that heavy shadow that comes from back here. Nice pops of highlights here will just help to break that up a little bit. Just uh, make it explode a little bit more when they look in. I am going to start a fine, everything I just said, hold on to that, but forget it for a moment. Cause I'm gonna start with a fine weave on the hairline just for pulling it up out of your, like when she pulls her hair up's sake. Anytime I'm doing anything along the hairline, I like to do a fine weave just cause it makes it a little bit softer. So again, whatever your little heart desires as how much. So here's a, a question. Uh, Janine is saying, would you say this technique would have an age group or would you use it for mature clients? I have been using this on anybody because it's really, it's not so much of a, like a, a TikTok trend as it is just a, a technique for making someone's hair look nice. Like it's not, I don't feel like this plays into any trend too hard that would ice anybody out that may want it. That makes sense? Yeah. So if you want it more subtle, if somebody, you know, mature doesn't want a crazy explosion of blonde, then you just change it up a little bit. Maybe do a little smaller of a money piece. You know, don't be afraid to reference Jen Aniston. Everyone of every age wants to look like her. <laughs> I'm mirroring the, the hairline as far as my, I like diagonals because they blend and you want a little bit of blending to happen when you're using something more severe, like a full on slice. Again, don't go crazy thick. If you want more blonde, do more thin slices. And then I'll use this piece, because I it's the last one you put in. This will be what I check to make sure everything is done. So when you're checking the money pieces and you're like, okay, they're they're good, but you know, they're not gonna fry off if I give everything another minute or two. I'll come back to this foil and look at it and be like, ooh, yeah, no. Or look at it and go, ooh, yeah, perfect. Because if this piece is good, then everything underneath it's gonna be even better because that's got the added incubation of being surrounded by other foils and other hair. So if you look at this and you're like, yeah, that's, that's where I want it, then you know that everything down here is gonna be A-OK -okay because this all gets a little bit warmer. So that's exciting. We put the noodles in the oven and then we have lasagna. I processed it and toned it in those few seconds. What toner did you use? And on curled that? it. Actually, I didn't tone this you one. Didn't tone it. Yeah, it was just technique because I have a demi over the whole base and I was afraid if I toned it, it would lift that off. But again, all right there. So now that you've seen where I put it in, you've got money in the front and then these diffused highlights back here. That's what the teasing does, is it makes it so that there's not a harsh line, but there is a highlight here. And you'll see it just picks up nicely, but diffuses itself. And then when you come into the sides, you've got a little, let me just adjust. As you come into the sides, you've got your highlights in here. You've got your slices that definitely show up. They're definitely in there. But when the hair is down, it's nothing too extreme. It'll blend nicely. And then as you make it into the back, where you've got a bit stronger, where you've got your full slices, it holds its own up against the, the depth and dark of the back of the head. So how about them apples? Just give her a little all the way around. Look hard on this. Look at it, love it. Thank you guys so much for, for joining us today, letting us be a part of uh, your morning, and can't wait for the next one.